Hi, I'm Paul Frampas. I'm the director of the Winter Institute for Simulation Education and Research. Most of you know us as Wiser. I want to talk in the next few minutes about what's the most important thing to talk about during the debriefing. Well, the answer is quite easy. As you know, many of my answers for simulation based questions are, it depends. This is one where it might depend, but it should be pretty clear cut. The most important things to cover in the debriefing or to have participants cover in the debriefing is the things that conform to the learning objectives of the scenario. Well-designed scenarios should begin with learning objectives in mind. The learning objectives from the scenario should be able to be carried back to the learning objectives of the program, whether that's a patient safety program in the hospital or an all-day course in teamwork and communications that you might be running at your simulation center. You should have some course or curriculum objectives, and then each scenario should have its own set of learning objectives. That's where we want to focus most of the conversation of the debriefing in terms of the technical aspects or the details of what we are trying to accomplish in the debriefing aspect of the scenario. Are there things that happen during simulations that are important that might not be part of the learning objectives? You betcha, happens all the time. My advice to you though is to minimize the conversations surrounding those and focus on the learning objectives. For simulation to be efficient and effective, maximizing the efficiency and the effectiveness, we need to design so that we are sure that we accomplish learning outcomes. And those learning outcomes need to be achieved in various forms. And what I mean by that is, we do simulation all over the world for lots of different people in lots of different settings. So it would make sense that your learning objectives are going to vary and change from setting to setting. For example, if you're teaching an all-day difficult airway workshop at your simulation center, and you know people are going to be exposed to multiple scenarios platformed on multiple learning objectives that accomplish the learning objectives for a course, you can have some more flexibility in your debriefing and what you talk about, knowing that in scenario one, this will be covered. In scenario two, this will be covered. In scenario three, another set of learning objectives will be covered. Let's contrast that, say, with an in-situ simulation where you go into the intensive care unit and with a team of practicing professionals, you do a case of sepsis, resuscitation, and shock. But this is part of a program where only two times per year this in situ simulation happens for these practicing professionals on the unit. Those learning objectives are going to look a little bit differently. Uh, you uh, probably uh, need to think about, I've only got one crack at this or two cracks at this this year. What are the most important and salient points that are going to be factored into the debriefing conversation? Perhaps it comes from safety and risk data from your hospital system. Perhaps it comes from a perceived deficiency by a manager or leader of the unit. Perhaps it comes from the demographics, the type of patients that you have in that particular unit. But it's going to be contrasted with that first example I gave you where there's an all-day course focusing on one topic. So that's the most important thing to cover in your debriefing is what are the learning objectives saying? Great scenarios that are embedded into a curriculum development process have links, links back to the learning objectives. The learning objectives should accomplish the learning outcomes by the time this scenario is over. And it's important to realize that the learning objectives for the scenario should be connected to the scenario design they should be reflected in or conducted in the debriefing, maybe some guiding points or debriefing points that a faculty member wants to ensure comes up. And then if there's an assessment tool or assessment objectives, they should be directly linked back to the learning objectives. So you see how the learning objectives should drive what the major topics are in the debriefing. One last tip, if something major happens in your scenario that everybody knows it happened, right, wrong, or otherwise, and it's sort of an unavoidable topic, we call that an elephant in the living room. And maybe that elephant in the living room is not anywhere part of the learning objectives. We highly recommend that you just address that first and get it off the table. 
and then shift the remainder of the debriefing time and debriefing conversation to focus on those learning objectives that are germane to the scenario as it was originally designed. So I hope that helps, helps you think about what's the most important thing to cover during the debriefing. Good luck with your simulation efforts, and until next time, happy simulating. If you want to be notified every time we come up with another fantastic Wiser video on YouTube, please click that big fat red subscribe button below. You'll be glad you did.